Good evening and welcome to the fastest half hour in the cryptid world, This Week in Bigfoot. The new show that scours the internet and the Bigfoot community each and every week so you don't have to. If it has to do with Sasquatch, Bigfoot, or the Wild Man, we've got it all covered. So buckle up as we bring you the stories that are shaping the Bigfoot world. Well, let's get started. Our top story today, Bigfoot researchers face ethical dilemma in protected wilderness areas. Bigfoot, the legendary creature said to inhabit the forests of North America, has captivated the imagination of enthusiasts for decades. However, the increased interest in the creature has led to an ethical debate over conducting searches for Bigfoot in protected wilderness areas. Conservationists argue that searching for Bigfoot in protected areas can have a negative impact on the environment and wildlife. A study published in the Journal of Environmental Management found that human activities, including hiking and camping, can cause significant impacts on soil, vegetation, and wildlife in protected areas. These impacts can take years to recover and may have long-term lasting effects on the ecosystem. Furthermore, searches for Bigfoot in protected areas can lead to increased traffic, noise pollution, and the disturbance of wildlife. This can cause stress and even harm to animals who rely on the protection of these areas for their survival. Despite these concerns, proponents of Bigfoot research argue that the searches are harmless and that the enthusiasts often operate under strict guidelines that minimize any impact on the environment. They also argue that the searches for Bigfoot can help raise awareness about the importance of preserving wilderness areas and protecting the natural world. However, a recent survey published in the Journal of Outdoor Recreation and Tourism found that the majority of park visitors and conservationists surveyed expressed concerns about the potential impacts of Bigfoot searches in protected areas. The study also found that the visitors to protected areas were more likely to engage in ethical behavior when they believed that they were being monitored. In response to these concerns, some organizations have developed guidelines for conducting Bigfoot searches in protected areas. The BFRO, for one example, recommends obtaining permission from the landowners and park officials, using non-invasive techniques and minimizing impacts on the environment. Nevertheless, the controversy over Bigfoot searches in protected wilderness areas highlights the tensions between preserving the natural environment and satisfying human curiosity. While enthusiasts may have good intentions, it is important to consider the potential impacts on their actions in the environment and the wildlife. In conclusion, the ethical debate surrounding Bigfoot searches in protected wilderness areas is a complex issue, one that requires a balanced approach. While Bigfoot fans may have the best of intentions, it's important to consider the potential impacts their actions have on the environment and wildlife. By establishing guidelines and regulations for conducting searches in protected areas, we can ensure that the search for Bigfoot does not come at the expense of the rest of the natural world. While skeptics say nothing indisputable exists, many investigators and enthusiasts point to examples like the 2007 Jacobs photo or 2012 Frank Sienski picture. Well, one YouTube account called Trail Terror recently posted what he says seems to be a motion detection photo that allegedly captured not just one, but four Sasquatches. We're going to go ahead and roll that clip. Following the previous video where the owner said he was sure there are multiple Bigfoots, I have found this picture which seems to be from a motion detection trail camera. It seems to have been activated by the movement of these strange four figures. I suppose they were moving rather quickly since the picture is all blurry. But even from this we can make up some strange characteristics of these figures. They do seem rather large, no clothes, but very hairy. This would be the exact description of the Bigfoot. But what is strange is that there are four of them. And I personally always have thought of Bigfoot as a single entity, but it seems this is not the case. So is Bigfoot a species rather than an individual? Despite garnering over 243,000 views, the purported image has a few glaring details that even some of the most emphatic believers find problematic. Although the narrator believes these figures appear blurry because they were moving quickly, 
Critics argue if that was the case, we'd see the limbs from at least one or two of these figures captured them in running stance and not at their sides in an upright position. Others believe the alleged Bigfoot were probably photoshopped, with some even saying all four figures are just variants of the same image, while others are quick to point out there's no timestamp in the photo. Although a reverse image search didn't yield any results, even if this supposed image is authentic, we know nothing about its backstory. All the narrator said was they found this image without disclosing anything, like how they came across it, the time and date it was taken, not even its location. The blurry image was part of a longer compilation video showing strange photos and clips of alleged Bigfoot along with other cryptids and strange phenomena that were allegedly captured by trail cameras and other recording devices. Although the channel says their goal is to bring strange and weird encounters caught on trail camera, I'm sure Trail Terror would do their viewers a huge service by providing more of a backstory on images like this, or at least explain how they found them in the first place. What can be seen on trail cameras can terrify us, like seeing the footage of a gigantic creature in the forest, four scary figures stalking, terrifying screams from the forest, ADHD, or Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, is a condition that affects millions of people worldwide. It is characterized by symptoms of hyperactivity, impulsivity, and inattention. While ADHD is primarily associated with cognitive and behavioral challenges, recent studies have found a link between ADHD and belief in paranormal phenomena, including Bigfoot. One study conducted by the University of Westminster in the United Kingdom found that people with ADHD were more likely to believe in paranormal phenomena, including ghosts, UFOs, and Bigfoot. The study involved 228 participants, half of whom were diagnosed with ADHD. The researchers found that those with ADHD were significantly more likely to believe in paranormal phenomena than those without the condition. However, the study did not establish a casual relationship between ADHD and a belief in paranormal phenomena. Another study conducted at the University of Gothenburg in Sweden found a correlation between ADHD and a belief in conspiracy theories. The study found that individuals with ADHD were more likely to believe in conspiracy theories and engage in conspiratorial thinking. The researchers suggested that this may be due to a difference in cognitive processing or a tendency to seek out novel and exciting experiences. A third study conducted by the University of Liverpool in the UK found that people with ADHD were more likely to report having experienced paranormal phenomena such as seeing ghosts or UFOs. The study found that individuals with ADHD were more likely to experience sense of presence experiences, where they felt as if someone or something was present in the room with them, even when there wasn't. The researchers suggested that this may be due to differences in perception and attention. While the reason for the link between ADHD and the belief in paranormal phenomena is still unclear, there are some theories. One theory is that the people with ADHD tend to seek out novelty and excitement, which can make them more likely to believe in paranormal phenomena. They may be more open to the idea of Bigfoot because it represents an unknown and mysterious creature, which can be exciting and stimulating to an ADHD brain. Another theory is that people with ADHD may have difficulty filtering out irrelevant information, which can make them more susceptible to misinformation and rumors. They may be more likely to believe in Bigfoot because they've heard stories or seen images of the creature and have not been able to filter out the information as being unreliable. This theory suggests that people with ADHD may be more likely to imagine scenarios that involve Bigfoot or other paranormal creatures, which can increase their belief in their existence. While the link between ADHD and the belief in Bigfoot may be interesting, it is important to remember that the correlation does not equal causation. It is also important to know that not all individuals with ADHD will believe in Bigfoot and that the belief in paranormal phenomena is not exclusive to individuals with ADHD. Today's episode of This Week in Bigfoot is sponsored by Got Knockers Apparel and Clothing. From hoodies and caps to soaps, keychains, and bats, Got Knockers has everything you need to show your love of Bigfoot. For more information and to shop their items, be sure to visit the Got Knockers page on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Got Knockers. Hey, Got Knockers? Well, it looks like it's that time again, folks. Part of the show where we give content creator Michael Merchant, a.k.a. Snowwalker Prime, screen time to speak his mind and get what's ever bothering him off his chest. We call it Two Minutes With. Ah, 
I saw a Bigfoot. No, what you saw was a bear. It's a common mistake. Everybody makes it all the time. Every single time. It looks like you're taking an old argument and just putting it in a new suit. I believe this is a logical fallacy. Logical fallacy? Logical fallacy! You act like this is something new. This has been discussed dozens of times. Oh, I just discovered it. I'm the first one. It's so, it's so obscure and unique. The main problem I see with this is your reversed engineering an argument based on the premise that you think you know a certain fact. You're not asking a question. You're not saying, is Bigfoot real or not? To be or not to be? Your preconceived bias is that Sasquatch is not real. Thus, A, B, or C has to be true. Has to be. You seem to make three main premises. One, that there's lots of bears everywhere is that Sasquatch was reported. Every single place the Sasquatch is reported, there's lots of bears. Lots of bears. Easy mistake to make. Quadrupedal, furry, snouted thing running on the ground. Looks exactly like a furry human. Looks just like it. Looks just like a hairy hominid. If your first premise was true, you wouldn't expect the glaring anomalies. Texas has like 318 BFRO reports and... 5,000 bears. Florida, I think, has 4,000 bears and 300, 298 reports. Maine has 18 Bigfoot reports and 35,000 bears. The two things you need for a Bigfoot sighting to occur is a Bigfoot and a human being to report the encounter. I can guarantee with 100% confidence every single place there's a Bigfoot report there was a person there. Why are you not making the argument that people are confusing humans for Sasquatch? Why are you not making that, that, that position? You would have to establish that every single solitary person that has reported a Sasquatch sighting in an area where there might be bears is so confused and befuddled they can't tell a bear from a Sasquatch. We here in North America don't ordinarily see many images of Bigfoot-like creatures from other parts of the world. But one video coming out of Australia is getting a lot of attention. The following clip was posted on the YouTube channel of a group known as Yowie Busters of Australia. G'day friends, this is Stats from Yowie Busters Australia. On the 30th of July 2022 at 5.38pm, just on dusk, the owner bunk captured this brilliant footage of a yowie. Using filters, I have managed to brighten up this 21 seconds of incredible film. Thank you for watching. While the footage has stirred a lot of controversy, admins of the Yowie Busters Facebook group were apparently being accused of deleting comments, even removing members who were skeptical of the grainy footage. Despite these allegations, however, the Yowie Busters team says they're very thankful and encouraged by the support and positive responses they've gotten since posting the video. Since it was first posted, there were a few noteworthy developments pertaining to the footage that occurred. One poster in another Facebook group made further enhancements to the video that claimed to help them point out what they're saying was a smartphone that the figure in question was carrying. Another even posted what seems to be the original unedited footage. The original footage itself is raising more questions than answers. Critics are questioning some particular details in the original footage, like the background music that was playing, in addition to the sincerity of the two individuals whose voices were captured on the video, responded to the purported sightings. It's from Yowie Busters Australia. On the 30th of July 2022 at 5.38pm, just on dusk, the owner bunk captured this brilliant footage of a Yowie. Using filters, I have managed to brighten up this 21 seconds of incredible film. It is worth noting, however, that the Yowie Busters team did do their due diligence and attempted a reenactment of what they filmed, but they still seem to be continuing their investigation of the footage. It's also worth noting that Yari reports in Queensland, Australia, date back to the 19th century and still occur in the 21st century, with some documented encounters happening as recently as 2021. Regardless of your thoughts on the Yari Busters, they do seem to be doing dedicated research on the other side of the world and run a very active Facebook group with over 2,000 members. As far as whether or not this video is real, We'll leave that for you to decide.
and alleged sighting near Francis Peak in Utah has been making the rounds as of late. The film was apparently shot by a gentleman who simply calls himself John. As you can see here in the somewhat shaky footage, there is what looks like someone some or something attempting to cross the mountainside. For more on this, we turn it over to Lindsay with the Kentucky Bigfoot Research Organization. Hi guys, Lindsay Raymonds with the KBRO here, once again coming at you fast with another Is It Real or Is It Fake video. So what are we looking at today? Well, on the screen behind me here, you're going to be viewing a short clip that was recently uploaded to the internet by Rocky Mountain Sasquatch Organization. Now what that shows is what appears to be a tall, bipedal, hominid-like creature striding across deep snow across a mountain range in Farmington, Utah. So what do we think about it? Well, for me, this one sits firmly in the yellow, in the BS meter. The reason being that having zoomed in a little bit, I think there's something not quite right about the creature's shadow. But that being said, it's not about what I think. What do you guys think? As always, we love to hear from you. Drop us a comment below. On the lighter side, and to reinforce the fact that we actually do scour the internet and the Bigfoot community to bring you everything we can within a 30 minute time frame, our friend Scott at Kentucky Ballistics sent us this video with a 50 cal and a concrete Bigfoot. Enjoy. May have to get another one of these things to keep, you know, cause I don't know, it's pretty cool. I kind of like it. So a lot of times we start small and then we work our way up, but today we're gonna go ahead and hit Bigfoot with the 50 BMG. And if there's anything left, then we'll hit him with some smaller stuff. So. I have the Serbu BFG 50A with the American flag Cerakote. Such a beautiful, beautiful weapon. And there's lots of different ammos that we could hit this Bigfoot with, but I'm really curious to see what'll happen if we just hit him with a regular full metal jacket. So this is a PMC bronze 660 grain full metal jacket. My goodness! <laughs> Bigfoot wasn't very tough, was he? Oh, his whole top half is gone. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's time to turn toward technology, and boy, do we have a doozy for you guys this week. It's called Chat GPT 4. For years, researchers and documentary filmmakers have been searching for new ways to tell the stories of their discoveries in engaging and informative ways. That's where ChatGPT4 comes in. Now, ChatGPT4 is a cutting-edge language model that can assist researchers and documentary filmmakers in generating natural-sounding text content that's grammatically correct and coherent. Now, stay with me, folks. The tool's sophisticated algorithms are designed to understand the intricacies of the human language and provide high-quality outputs that can be used to create compelling stories. Now, for example, we're in the middle of making a documentary on a missing hunter. I simply typed in creative opening scenes suspenseful for a documentary on a missing hunter, and ChatGPT4 gave me three or four different great ideas. Now, to see how ChatGPT4 works, I pulled a video off the internet. Uh, there's dozens of them out there. This video gives you a great demonstration of the tool's capabilities on how it can assist a filmmaker in their work. Check it out. So ChatGPT, or Generative Pre-Training Transformer, is a large language model developed by OpenAI that can produce human-like text. It is trained and being trained on a huge set of data that allows it to understand and generate a wide range of language. One of the main ways is through script writing. ChatGPT can help generate script ideas, help write dialogue, and even assist in character development. Just feels limitless, especially if you're someone like me who has a lot of ideas and outlines, but just needs help by someone or something to color in the lines for you. Saving. Also for content creators, it can help you come up with ideas for your specific niche. It can then help you write scripts on those specific topics. And then once you have the script, you can then ask it to produce SEO, YouTube video titles for that script, which can really speed up your pre-production process for marketing and social content. Now, if you're a content creator like me and you're pressed for time, this is like having your own personal assistant. It's intuitive, it's smart, it learns your style. Go to openai.com, sign up, it's free, check it out, it's that good. It will change the way you do everything when you're creating content. Trust me, it's that good. Don't be afraid of artificial intelligence. Check it out. Tonight's edition of This Week in Bigfoot is sponsored by Broken Branch Designs. From outerwear and clothing to home and garden decor, 
Broken Branch Designs has everything to do with Sasquatch. For more information, visit BrokenBranchDesignsLLC.com. It's time to bring you up to speed in a couple of recent podcasts and live streams. First up, Squatch Talks Podcast, Episode 58, Legendary Pine Barrens. In this show, hosts Nate Moyer and Eric Spinner interview jewelry maker and author Paul Peterson Jr. about his new book on the Jersey Pine Barrens and the stories that made it up. Let's check it out. Uh, I have a whole theory about Bigfoot and and Rougarou and Jersey Devil, and I think a lot of them are mistaken for each other. Yeah, and that would make sense because right. the Jersey Devil has been seen since before white people got here. Right. Right. The Indians had a, a word for the pine barrens, which was papoosing. Yep. And that means place of the serpent. Yep. So it, something's been around here since mm -hmm. way before we got here. Oh, no now, doubt. What can, what can last, live that long, right? It's got to mm -hmm. breed or it has to migrate. And mm -hmm. things migrate, canines migrate, a Bigfoot migrate. So who knows, man? I mean, that's that's what people are seeing something. Now, in my opinion, the Squatch Talks podcast doesn't seem to get enough recognition. The show and the channel are overlooked by a lot of folks who would find their content and level of production highly entertaining. So be sure to check them out. That's the Squatch Talks podcast channel on YouTube. Make sure you tell Eric and Nate that I sent you. Next up, understanding Bigfoot, I was seven and Bigfoot stared right at me. In this episode, Troy Hager from Eastern Nebraska joins hosts Mike Scott and Beck Pepper to share his Bigfoot encounter in Western Iowa. Let's see what Troy's got to say. This is the one and only time that I heard an actual Bigfoot vocalization other than recordings. It started out like um, a whoop, because it started out with this woo, and, but then it went into the, I guess you'd call it the classic Bigfoot scream. Yeah. Um, best way I can describe it is if you ever seen finding Bigfoot and you heard Bobo do his call, it was kind of like that, only probably about 15 to 20 times louder and had the added, you could feel it. You could almost um, feel the ground vibrating underneath the, you as well when that's going on. No, I, I mean, I. No, yeah. I mean I could feel it. I mean it was, it was like when. Um, have you ever, one of those cars with those oh, yeah. bass come yeah. up to you and you yeah. just feel it oh, yeah. thumping in your chest? Yeah, that's how this was. Right. Not the whoop part, not the woo, how it started, but when it got into that that long, scream long or man. howl or whatever um, you want to call it. Yeah. All of a sudden, it it just it just hit me, and you could just. Feel it penetrating all oh, yeah. the way through you. Moving on, the gang from Sasquatch Theory is back with Harry Hominid Scene, Macod Mountain, North Carolina. In this episode, Philip from Eastern North Carolina shares his Bigfoot encounter story. Let's check it out. I mean, it's the largest, definitely the loudest noise I've ever heard out there. And I'm wondering what's going on. And I hear this uh, kind of rustling of leaves right after I hear the boom. So immediately I say, oh, you know, a, a tree fell. So what I'm, what I'm thinking at the time is that there's a park ranger out there maybe doing some trail maintenance because, uh, you know, I've, I've seen them out there doing that every now and then, you know, clearing stuff out of the way for the trails. So that's, a, that's what I'm expecting to see. I'm expecting to walk around this corner to where I can actually see what's going on in the valley and um, that's what I'm expecting to see. I'm expecting to see a park ranger, you know, doing some trail maintenance. So I come around the corner, and immediately I don't, I don't see anything. But then I notice some movement off to my right, and I see this thing just, you know, moving very fast across the valley. And... Um, at first, I thought it might be a bird because um, it just seemed like that because it was very stationary. Um, but when I really got to looking at it, I noticed that this is something that's moving across the valley at an incredible speed. 
I mean, very fast. This thing went several hundred feet within seconds. Batting cleanup today is Dixie Cryptid. In this short 10-minute clip, the host recounts the story, what he saw on the bridge. Here we go. Well, the road dipped into a steep hill heading into the swamp. His motorcycle was beginning to shimmy on the loose gravel. With all that vibrating, his light was jumping all over, but he still managed to see something huge standing on the old wooden bridge at the bottom of the hill. It was big enough that he thought about turning around and heading back the other way. And if he thought his motorcycle would make it back up that steep hill, he probably would have. As he got closer to the thing, he made up his mind to gun the engine and pass it wide open. A little closer and he was able to make out that it had a body like a bear but a face of a man. It was too late to turn back now so he opened the throttle up and he went speeding by. And that's when it gave out a big yell and it reached out and tried to grab him. I saw his fingers and its nails, he sobbed. Thank the good Lord that it didn't catch him. I'd like to take just a moment and personally thank Kyle at Encrypted Connections for the shout out last week. We put a lot of work into cracking this thing out for you guys each and every week, and he recognized that. And to be honest, a little self-promo never hurt anyone. So I'm going to play a little bit of a shout-out for you here right now. Thanks again, Kyle. Um, this, I urge you all to go watch. That show, This Week in Bigfoot, is money. It's so good. I, I, and I had no idea about it. And um, I finally watched it today. Man, what I've been missing. Uh, it's so, it's money. It's so good. It's so, it's 30 minutes, so, you know, it's not that long. Um, it's They scour the internet for everything new in Bigfoot news. Sighting reports, audio reports, track reports, um, the gossip stuff. When people are hoaxing, I promise you, it's, it is so good. If you like Bigfoot, it, it'll probably be the best 30 minutes you'll spend in the week. It's that, it's, it's that good, I promise you. With spring finally here and the days getting warmer, Bigfoot conferences are now in full swing. That being said, there really is only one guy that keeps us up to speed on the who's, the what's, and the where's. Chuck Larson's got another great conference in this week's Spotlight. Eleven years ago, Mark DeWorth and the Ohio Bigfoot Organization held the very first Bigfoot Conference in Salt Fork State Park. Since then, the conference has grown into one of the premier Bigfoot conferences in the world, drawing thousands of people each year. The event features top-rated speakers from across the Bigfoot world, from television personalities, local and national investigators, and other prominent figures. The conference has something for everyone. The event runs May 5th and 6th and features free events including the largest vendor fair of Bigfoot merchandise, family and advanced hikes, a Bigfoot festival, and much more. It's a great weekend full of fun and jam-packed with Bigfoot events for the whole family. The event is already sold out, so unless you are already holding tickets for this event, you're out of luck. And that's this week's Conference Spotlight. Brendan, back to you. See, you're getting so much fucking better. Look at that. All right, folks, that's a wrap. I'd like to thank you for watching and remind you, if you have any new stories you'd like to let us know how we're doing, you can always email the show at thisweekinbigfootnewscast at gmail.com. For Mike Lucci and Chuck Larson, I'm Brendan Brown, reminding you that when it comes to your Bigfoot news, be informed, not biased. Take care. <laughs>